Video has become a huge part of our internet experience these days. Videos are everywhere, from funny cat videos on Facebook to this video that you're watching right now. The only reason videos are so accessible and so common these days is because of something known as video compression. This means turning one video source into a smaller one for either easier video transfer or for streaming over the internet. So let's take a look at the two most important video compression standards currently in in use. These are H.264 and the newer H.265 standards. We will look into how these two standards work and more importantly, how do these two video compression standards compare to each other. Whether you are someone who likes to upload nature walk videos onto the internet or likes to stream video games on Twitch, it's really interesting to understand how video compression works. Hello everyone, this is Mike from Sabrent here and if you enjoy tech videos and tech related videos then make sure to hit that subscribe button and and hit that notification bell so you get updated for any future videos. Both H.264 and H.265 are known as codecs. A codec is a piece of software that can utilize hardware to code video files during their creation and also to decode the same type of video for playback. In fact, the word codec is a combination of the words code and decode. Video compression codecs can reduce the size of a video file by essentially following a series of program processes that allow a computer system system that is doing the video encoding to squeeze the video data into smaller file sizes without a substantial or noticeable loss in quality in most cases. This is done by using a combination of things like prediction and complex algorithms. Video compression codecs like H.264 and H.265 are used to compress raw video data that can take up a lot of space in your computer and then compress it into more smaller and more manageable file sizes. For example, let's say you need to compress a video of yourself talking to a camera with a simple static background like this one just here. Now, the codec will determine that your background isn't changing that drastically as you're speaking. So instead of storing all of that real-time information about your background, the codec will compress your background information, meaning that it will isolate you from your background and only keeping the data of the real-time changes like of me moving my hands as I'm speaking or, for example, the mouth as I'm talking. This is because your background is static and there's no need to keep all of that information as the information is essentially repeating itself throughout the video. This is obviously an oversimplified way of explaining how these codecs work, but you get the idea by using simple tricks you can reduce the file sizes. Now let's look at one of the most popular decompression codec standards out there, H.264, and it's newer and arguably better sibling, the H.265 video standard. H.264 is a well-known video compression standard for high definition video, is also known as MPEG-4 Part 10, Advanced Video Coding, or MPEG-4 HEVC for short. H.264 is an industry standard and widely used in all kinds of video files from recording to streaming. And it's not just used for videos and entertainment. H.264 is also widely used for things like surveillance footage too. H.264 is a block oriented compression standard. It works by compressing frames of the video using a block oriented motion compensated base video compression standard. Those units are called macro blocks. Macro blocks typically consist of 16 by 16 pixel samples that can be subdivided into transform blocks and may be further subdivided into what are known as prediction blocks. This allows H.264 to reduce the file size of the video without compromising much on video quality. There are many video formats that use H.264 compression standards. Two of the most popular ones are .mov and .mp4 formats. Formats themselves are just digital file containers. Both of these formats use H.264 to compress the information in a video file. .mov is a proprietary file format that was made by Apple to work exclusively with their devices. And .mp4 is an international standard for video files. And a lot of streaming and video platforms recommend that you use this file format. While .mp4 is more commonly used, it is a more 
compressed video file format, and thus comparing it to file formats like .mov, MP4 does have a slight worsening in quality. H.265 on the other hand is the newer video compression standard, and since it is the newer one, it is also the better video compression standard. First published in 2013, H.265 has yet to become as widely used as H.264, but it is catching up pretty fast. According to the Video Developers Report of 2019, it is the second most commonly used video coding standard after H.264. H.265 is also known as High Efficiency Video Coding, or HEVC for short. While H.264 uses macro blocks, H.265 processes information by using something called Coding 3 Units, or CTUs. A macro block could span between 4x4 to 16x16 block sizes. CTUs, on the other hand, can process as many as 64x64 blocks, giving them the ability to compress information more efficiently. This means that H.265 can retain more information in a video after compression as compared to H.264. H.265 is more advanced than H.264 in several ways. The main difference is that HEVC allows for further reduction file sizes and therefore reduce the required bandwidth for your live streams or video recordings. What this means in the real world is that when you're recording a video or streaming a, a video, you can actually stream at a much higher quality by using the same, if not actually smaller file sizes than the H.264 file format. Without getting too much into things like bitrate and such, H.265 needs less bitrate to store the same level of information as compared to H.264. Basically put, the higher the bitrate, the larger the video size. So real world example, just to give you a comparison, the required bandwidth to stream 4K video is around 32 megabits per second for H.264. For H.265, it is just under 15 megabits per second. This essentially means that the video can be recorded or streamed at half the bitrate without compromising on quality. This also means that when you are recording higher quality video, you can actually use lower bit rates, meaning that you can record things like 8K video or even 6K video using just an SD card, whereas before you would have had to have used more expensive media types. In addition to cutting down file sizes even further, H.265 also has much better motion compression and spatial prediction than H.264. What this means is that you can have a lot of stuff going on in the video, like this, or more than that really, and you can still get away with running a lower bitrate. Previously recording at a lower bitrate meant that wherever there was a lot of motion in the video, the quality of the video would become worse. This was because in a video with a lot of movement and action going on, there is a lot more information that needs to be captured, but at a lower bitrate, there is only so much bandwidth to go around. This is why when you are watching a live stream of action sports, for example, and then suddenly there is a lot of action on stream, it looks like the video quality has got worse almost immediately. With H.265 compression standards, this video would actually perform much better. So you might ask, if H.265 is so great and it's been around for almost eight years, why is H.264 still more widely used around the world? Well, the answer is pretty simple. H.265 requires significantly more computing power when the video is viewed, edited, and even played back. The fact is, is that this is a huge barrier to entry for a lot of people and industries. However, we are seeing more and more devices with special H.265 encoders and decoder chips to handle this kind of codec, meaning that processors can basically be less powerful, making it easier and cheaper to implement H.265 encoding and decoding. Just a decade ago, you would have had to take out a loan to get your hands on a 4K camera and a TV to play on, but today almost every phone has the ability to record and play back this footage, and it won't be long until 6 and 8K video will become the norm, with H.265 as well becoming the norm. But that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then please make sure to hit that like button, and if you're new here, make sure to hit hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated on all our future videos. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.